You're listening to West Bend's podcast, Music for a While. This episode will be a little bit different because it's the first installment of Mailbag. This is a segment dedicated to you, our listeners. Barb Hobart and Brian Finley were thrilled to receive so many thoughtful messages last week as responses to episode four on Glenn Gould. Submissions were made by email and through direct message on Instagram and Facebook. Here are Barb and Brian after they quickly got in touch with one another to read your feedback. Enjoy. Well, Barb, guess what? I just got uh, I got an amazing note from Eleanor Bailey about our podcast on Glenn Gould. And I just, uh, are you there? I'm here. Oh, excellent. Well, you got to hear this. This is what Eleanor writes. I taught elementary school in Oshawa with Glenn Gould's cousin. When Jesse would appear at school looking very tired, we would know that Glenn had made his very late telephone call to Jesse. <laughs> she would tell her she would tell us her memories of his summer visits to her childhood home in Uxbridge. An amazing musician with an interesting performance style for sure. That was from Eleanor Bailey. Have you heard anything from I, anybody? I did, and I'm just going to insert one little thing because Uxbridge, if you remember, was where he made one of his first public appearances when he was about five years old. Yes, so I'm that's wondering right. if that was the connection. Well, Barb, read me yours. I well recall the days in the early 1940s when I studied at the Toronto Conservatory of Music, which later became the Royal Conservatory of Music of Toronto. It was located at the corner of College Street and University Avenue. After my lesson with Margaret Parsons Poole, I would wait in front of one of the large waiting room windows for my father to pick me up. Each week, I was joined by another 10-year-old by the name of Glenn, who had just had his lesson with Alberto Guerrero and was also waiting for his ride home. We would lean on the board covered radiator and guess whose father would arrive first. Occasionally, my dad would forget that it was the day to pick me up after work, and I would see him drive by. <laughs> my mother always gave me a nickel to call her if that happened. Boy, have times changed. <laughs> and then she would be prepared to send him back for me when he arrived home. One day, Glenn's father drove by, and he had no nickel to call his mother, so I gave him mine. Around the same time, I recall my parents returning from a final concert of the Toronto Kiwanis Music Festival, just raving about a little boy by the name of Glenn Gould, whom they had heard play Levitsky's Waltz. I only knew my friend as Glenn, and never asked him his last name, so never made the connection. Not too long after this, perhaps, perhaps a couple of years, I found myself in some of the same classes in the Kiwanis Festival with Glenn. By then he was becoming well known as a child prodigy, and although the kids loved to hear him play, they really didn't take to him as a competitor as they didn't have a chance of winning a class. <laughs> I often wondered if it was for this reason that festivals moved from classes being age-related to grade-related. I recall Glenn as a young teenager entering an open class with adults for sight reading and the adjudicator saying, how can I adjudicate someone who can sight read better than I can? <laughs> So it was a sad day when Glenn died in 1982 at age 50. He and I would both be approaching our 90s if he were alive today. Wow, isn't that amazing? That's a wonderful letter. That's a letter, an email we received from Diana McLeod. And Diana was uh, music director for many, many years uh, at Trinity United Church in Peterborough from 1968 to 1999 and very active on the musical scene and in Peterborough at the Theatre Guild and at Showplace and everywhere else. So we really, really appreciate these notes. It's, uh, that's really fun. Uh, have you heard anything else in, in the news recently, Barb? Well, I did. And I gave you and me a pat on the back about this one. Well, because, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> because yesterday... The Los Angeles Times published an article called Glenn Gould's Decades Old Radio Documentaries Still Resonate. Podcasters Take Note. Ha ha. Uh -huh. There we go. <laughs> and they talk about how he was beginning to experiment with radio as a musical form. They talk about his Solitude trilogy and how it used contrapuntal, which you already had explained in our podcast. We had a good time talking about that. We That's did. Right. But one thing that they did mention that I didn't know was that he was friends with Marshall McLuhan. 
and Marshall McLuhan uh, encouraged him to take part in, in radio. So I, I was really excited to see that we're not the only ones that see the significance of his transference into technology. I mean, this is how many years on, and the Los Angeles Times is talking about how his radio work is still considered the gold standard. Well, we may not be the only ones, but I think we're the best, Barb. Don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, we certainly have the most fun. <laughs> we do. And this is this is wonderfully encouraging, and I just can't wait to talk to you next time. So we'll we'll have another podcast coming out uh, very soon. Terrific! We're looking okay, forward Barb, to it. Okay, Barb. This Take is care. great. Thanks a million. Have a great day. Bye. That was Barb Hobart joining me, Brian Finley here, talking about uh, our podcast on Glenn Gould. Glenn Gould for a while. If you'd like to add to the conversation, please do so. Westben at westben.ca. Thanks a lot. Take care for now. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the first episode of Mailbag. The next full episode of this podcast will be live on Friday and will be all about conductor and virtuoso Rock Monanoff. So stay tuned for that. You won't want to miss it. To receive a notification when it is published, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel or to the podcast itself via Spotify or Anchor FM. While you wait for this next episode, why not take a few minutes to listen to musical moment number 11, Rachmaninoff's Prelude in D Major, performed by West Bend's own artistic director, Brian Finley, at Wigmore Hall. You can find all of the musical moments and episodes of this podcast on our YouTube channel as well. If you're looking for even more West Bend, you can always make your way to www.westbend.ca slash sunshine dash ahead. Be sure to keep sending us your messages, and you never know, you may appear in the next episode of Mailbag. There is sunshine ahead. Thank you again for listening.